Coming up on the KCRG TV9 News at 6, stay or strike. Penford employees vote on the next move as the current contract expires. Inmates moved. A new but long delayed maximum security prison in Fort Madison finally opens with the transfer of 500 inmates. Two days before much of the Republican presidential field for 2016 meets in New Hampshire, Chris Christie visits Iowa. Live in high definition. From your 24 hour news source, you're watching KCRG TV 9 News at 6. Thank you for joining us tonight. Union members in Cedar Rapids say they plan to keep working but will strike if necessary. After their contract with Penford Products expired early this morning, a majority of union members voted to reject proposed contract terms from Penford's parent company, Ingredient Incorporated. Ingredient, based in suburban Chicago, purchased Penford in March of this year. This video is from Monday, when a handful of people picketed outside Penford in the final days of the contract that expired this morning at 7. Union officials have said all throughout that the new contract terms offered by Ingredient contain too many concessions. KCRG TV 9's Brady Smith follows up on this morning's union vote and ultimately the rejection. There were a few tension filled hours following the expiration of the contract between union members and Penford products. BCTGM Local 100 G President Chris Eby spoke with the media shortly after the vote. After viewing the concessions in the contract and the treat considering the treatment of their employees leading up to the contract overwhelmingly by 95 percent rejected the contract. EB says the proposed contract still has too many concessions for union members. The group also held a strike vote which would authorize a strike but EB made it clear that will only happen if continuing negotiations with ingredient break down. He says the plan going forward is to hammer out a better contract with ingredient and for union members to head back to the plant to do their regular jobs. We will hope we have no guarantees that in a good faith effort, seeing that their tactics didn't work, that they'll remove the sleeping trailers and the LBF strike services security and we can just, our workers can work and do the things they normally do. In Cedar Rapids, Brady Smith, KCRG TV9 News. BCTGM Local 100 G in Cedar Rapids, of course, has been very vocal over the past two days. Today, company representatives from Ingredient also spoke on camera for the first time. Ingredient says it purchased the Penford Corporation in March, including the Cedar Rapids facility, seeing this as a growth opportunity for the company. For now, Ingredient recognizes the union rejection of the contract, but also that the shifts will commence as normal. The union employees are returning to work and we are available to continue negotiations and we're ready to meet with the union as soon as they're available. Our goal always has been to reach a fair and equitable conclusion soon and we're going to continue to negotiate and hope we reach that end soon. It was 11 years ago in August of 2004 when a strike started at Penford lasting 78 days. It is key to note that Ingredient was not the owner of Penford products during that work stoppage. The bright sunshine didn't lead to the oppressive heat we saw two weekends ago. Still a little tight under the collar in places, though. Meteorologist Chris Havley joins us now with the first alert forecast. Chris. Yeah, a little, a little warm out there when you're in the sunshine and baking you out there. It's a little warm there still across eastern Iowa. Temperatures right now in those low and mid 80s. The dew points are steep in some areas and not so steep in others. Your dew points right now in Cedar Rapids, 74 degrees. That's some very sticky air. Waterloo is seeing a dew point in the 70s as well. But up towards Prairie du Chien and up towards Decorah, dew points are in the 50s and 60s. There's a little bit of a boundary there, and that boundary could lead to some possible storms coming up for us late, late tonight and into the early morning hours tomorrow. In fact, here's your planner for tonight. Temperatures dropping into the upper 60s for overnight lows. There will be a small period for some chances for storms, probably around the late, late night hours into the early morning. Then we'll see some more sunshine for tomorrow afternoon, and it's going to be hot and sticky again. We'll talk about that heat and some cooler weather coming up in the first alert forecast. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Chris. We'll meet up soon. 19 counties in Iowa, including some here in the TV9 viewing area, will be receiving federal money after severe storms came through back in June. President Obama signed a disaster declaration on Friday, helping Iowa counties with the storm recovery. Alamakey, Butler, Clayton, and Winnesheek counties in northeast Iowa were all included. The money will help share the cost of emergency work and repairs with state and local funds. The condition of a driver involved in a crash at Hawkeye Downs late last night has not been made public yet. 
Joan Feller hit a stalled race car head on in the final lap of the Legends race. According to Cedar Rapids Fire Battalion Chief Brian Gibson, Feller did not have a pulse when first responders pulled her from the race car. Fellow racer Dustin McGee was at Hawkeye Downs last night when the crash happened. He was not on the track, but instead in the infield. He told us more about these specific cars, saying the Legend cars are smaller than other racing models and they run with a motorcycle size engine. McGee says that limits the safety modifications that fit in these cars, but there are several requirements drivers must meet to race. But he also says pre-race safety checks at Hawkeye Downs are not as strict as they used to be. We used to, you know, pull up and they would actually reach in behind the window net and tug on our harness, make sure we have gloves and everything. Lately, honestly, I haven't seen anybody tug on anybody's Hans device that's on the, you know, officials behalf. Tonight at 10, we'll hear from other racers at the track when the crash happened. When we receive updates on Feller's condition, we will provide updates on the TV9 News at 10 and in real time online on KCRG.com. This is the second serious crash at Hawkeye Downs in less than 12 months. Back in September of last year, 68-year-old John Picard was killed after getting clipped while racing an RV in the Racem Wreckham event at the track. Hundreds of prisoners have been moved to Iowa's new maximum security prison in Fort Madison. At about 6.30 this morning, the Department of Corrections started moving the inmates into the new building. The new prison was scheduled to open two years ago, but numerous issues kept that out of service. In all, 507 prisoners were transferred this morning about one mile to the new prison. For this task, this required more than 200 law enforcement officers and correctional officers, some on the ground, some in the sky, to carry this out. One resident of Fort Madison said he had no idea the move was even taking place until the phone rang this morning. At 6.30 this morning, our phone rang, and we had um, a uh, recording saying that this was going to be blocked off and, um, you know, they diverting traffic. And so we kind of kind of knew it was going to be today. Fred Scaletta of the Department of Corrections says the final price tag for the prison is $182 million. Marion is following the Iowa Smoke Free Act of 2008 and extending that into the city's parks. As of today, no nicotine use throughout Marion Parks and Trails. The city is one of about 50 throughout Iowa to fully ban nicotine products from the parks and trails. This includes chewing tobacco, e-cigarettes and cigars. Using those products is a violation of city ordinance, but officers will not be finding any scoff laws until September the 1st. Anyone caught will face a $50 fine. Cedar Rapids golfers have started a petition to stop the city from banning tobacco products at four public golf courses. The possible ban is on hold until next year. If passed, though, all tobacco products, including cigars and e-cigarettes, would be prohibited at the Twin Pines, Gardner, Ellis, and Jones golf courses. In the months before the caucuses, presidential politicians always pop up at our state fairs or county fairs, just about every fest out there. For Irish Fest in Waterloo, the governor of New Jersey shook a few more hands before Monday's appearance in New Hampshire. Plus, the battle for the big trophies in Des Moines marches on. State baseball, only the strongest take the top crown, the latest from our teams. Later in sports on KCRG TV9. Live, on air, and online from your 24-hour news source, Chris Earle, meteorologist Chris Havley, and Josh Christensen Sports. This is KCRG TV9 News at 6. Several Republican presidential candidates are campaigning in Iowa throughout the weekend. We're still months out from the caucuses, but the debate season is getting much closer. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie visited Irish Fest in downtown Waterloo. While there, he shook some hands, took photos, including the selfies, also mingling with potential voters. The governor has gotten plenty of face time in Iowa over the past two weekends as he was at the Des Moines Farmers Market seven days ago. I mean, we put in full days every day, um, and I think that's what it takes in places like Iowa and New Hampshire to be able to get people's attention and ultimately get their votes. Governor Christie says he is fully prepared for the first Republican presidential debate this Thursday. KCRG TV 9 and the Gazette are co-sponsoring the first Republican presidential forum. The voters first forum will air live from New Hampshire on Monday. TV 9's Bruce Alney will be there as 14 candidates lay out why they should be president. The forum airs at 6 p.m. Iowa time on KCRG 9.2 as well as streaming online at KCRG.com. Also watch for live coverage on the KCRG TV 9 News at 10. 
Kentucky Senator Rand Paul closed out a two day swing throughout eastern Iowa today. On Friday, he was in Williamsburg, Waterloo, and Washington. For today, Walcott with this gathering in Davenport. Senator Paul has not been able to crack the top of the recent Iowa polling that places Scott Walker and Donald Trump close to the top. Today, the senator talked about his flat tax plans. I think a single rate, 14.5%, would actually be something that would be a great boon to the economy. And I think those uh, differences make it pretty easy for me to separate myself. In the national polls, Rand Paul has been hovering around 6% in the field of 16, a little bit higher in the Iowa polls for the Republican field. In 2012, former Pennsylvania Senator Rick Santorum won the Iowa Republican caucuses by just a handful of votes. Today, he was at the Plymouth County Fair. Santorum captured 25% of support that night three years ago to win, but he's in the low single digits in Iowa polling now, close to where Governor Christie is also polling in our state. Meteorologist Chris Halley returns as we're all watching for any storm possibilities and potential with all this hot air that's out there, Chris. Yeah, it's warm and humid again, Chris. We'll see temperatures in, uh, with the heat index values right now in the upper 80s to lower 90s across Cedar Rapids. We'll talk about the chances for storms early tomorrow morning coming up next in the First Alert forecast. Now, the First Alert forecast with meteorologist Chris Havley. Really a beautiful evening right now across the northeastern parts of the TV9 viewing area, including Decorah up towards Prairie du Chien. Lower dew points up there, temperatures are in the 80s, and nice little breeze out there blowing the trees. A good shot here on Decorah City Cam. As far as temperatures go, right now in those mid 80s across the board right now, Waterloo at 84, Decorah coming in at 84 as well, 83 in Dubuque and 84 in Cedar Rapids. But the heat index values breaking into those 90s for some spots. There is a little bit of mugginess coming back, especially in central and southern parts of eastern Iowa. We had a couple of real small pop up showers just on the east of the Mississippi River here earlier this evening, but those have since gone away and just fizzled out back off toward the west though northwest. We're watching for some possible storms to develop in South Dakota. Not a lot of activity going on right now, but if it does get better organized, that's where we're going to see our better chances for showers and storms just off to our north and west. The culprit for the chances for rain and also the reason why we have a little bit more muggier conditions. There's a warm front stretching pretty much just through the uh, Midwest right to the northern parts of of Iowa. It's going to be tracking more toward the north and east. We'll see a cold front slice through here coming up for tomorrow, which is going to bring us some much, much nicer weather after the chances for showers and storms do come to an end. We'll see some nicer, cooler and drier air arriving for Monday and the upcoming week is going to be very, very nice with relatively below average temperatures. Wait till you see the numbers in the extended forecast coming up. Here's pinpoint future cast rest of our night. We'll see this evening partly cloudy skies becoming mostly clear later tonight. Then we'll see that disturbance off to the north. Try to get some storms fired up and I think they're going to be more likely in areas north of Highway 20 as those storms do move through. If they do develop, they'll push off toward the east. Right now, not everyone's going to see rain. In fact, I think a lot of places won't see thunderstorm activity, especially south of Highway 20. For tomorrow afternoon, a lot of sunshine out there. Temperatures warming back up into the upper 80s. Some mid 70s dew points. Very sticky out there. As a cold front does slide through later in the afternoon, that may trigger a few more isolated storms for the late evening hours. As far as severe weather potential, that's going to remain up towards the Minnesota and Minneapolis area. So we're going to be staying clear of that. Can't rule out a strong storm, though, if those storms do move through northern parts of the area. Here's forecasted lows for tonight. Muggy, 67 Waterloo and Dubuque, 68 Cedar Rapids, 69 in Iowa City. Again, storms will be possible late, more towards the morning. Winds will be out of the southwest at 5 to 10. Tomorrow's forecasted highs, upper 80s to right around 90 degrees for Washington, 88 for Cedar Rapids, 89 Waterloo, 88 towards Charles City. Winds out of the southwest at 5 to 10. Again, storm chances, mainly early, a slight chance for an afternoon storm. The Muggy meter all the way around. We're going to be above 70s for dew points. That means very oppressive out there with those temperatures in the upper 80s. Very sticky and hot. Next three days, though, 80 for Monday. Low humidity. Feeling good out there. 80 for Tuesday as well. We'll see a few clouds out there, but other than that, we're not looking too bad. For the rest of the week, though, temperatures are going to be really, remaining rather cool. Mid 70s for highs. Very, very slim chances for showers and storms. So even though there's storm icons on there, very slim chances. But it's gorgeous coming up for next weekend. Highs in the mid 70s and sunny. I didn't even get to go poolside on Tuesday. I said oh, in this yeah, space we were talking that. about yeah. this is going to be 92 degrees, but it turned out not to be 92. Yeah. A little rainy. So we just stayed in. Well, now you so maybe the inverse will happen this time. Cross our fingers. Ah, well, well, it's not too hot. No <laughs> heat advisories. Right. Don't need that. No. Thanks, Chris. Josh is here for three of the high school baseball teams in our area. Today's game seven. 
It Six is. titles. Oh, it's really game three. I just like saying game seven. That's but true. You only need three now. games. Yeah. But uh, Waterloo Columbus played earlier. We'll have highlights of them. Plus, the early highlights for Waverly Shawrock. We'll also preview Iowa City West matchup. It's all coming up next on your 24-hour news source, KCRG TV 9. Now, KCRG TV 9 Sports with Josh Christensen. The Waterloo Columbus Catholic baseball team made its first ever state title appearance in school history. The Sailors took on Clear Lake for the Class 2A title. Scott Westerberg has the highlights. The Columbus Sailors looking for their first ever state title. Luke Farley in trouble in the first Lions bases loaded, but Farley brings the heat and gets out of the jam. But Farley did have some control issues as he throws ball four to Cooper Merrill. Ethan McHenry trots home from third and it's one zip Clear Lake. After a sack fly makes it 2 nothing. Mitch Kieran with bases loaded and he clears him with a three RBI double that one hops the fence in right. Clear Lake now up 5 to nothing. The Lions still threatening, but Lee Hansen makes a spectacular diving catch and right to end the inning, but not before Clear Lake takes a five zip lead. The Lions follow that up with a six run third to make it 11 to nothing. Columbus was able to score one in the fourth, but that was it as Clear Lake wins it 11 to one in five innings. They definitely came out of the gate stronger than we did, and uh, we, we could just never recover after that. And they, they were able to keep their foot in the gas well and never give us a chance to come back. That kind of set a tone for the rest of the game. It was kind of hard to overcome. Like I said, they got some good hitters. I thought they were every bit as good as Cascade. So we just didn't play as well as we did against Cascade. It means so much to, to all of us to be able to be the first team from Columbus to make it to state championship. And I love every single one of these guys, and I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done it with anyone else. From Principal Park in Des Moines, Scott Westerberg, TV9 Sports. Thank you, Scott. The Waverly Shell Rock baseball team is also making its first state title appearance in school history. The Gold Hawks are taking on Harlan for the Class 3A title. This game is still in progress on KCRG 9.2. Bottom one, Gold Hawks with a runner on second. Gentry Miller finds the gap in right center. Jake Velke easily scores to give Waverly the early 1-0 lead. Harlan tied it in the second, then in the fourth. Two on for Alex Robson. He rips one down the third baseline. Brady Thompson going to motor around third. He will score right, right now. Waverly leads. 7-1 to in the bottom of the fifth. Go Hawks are in great position to win the state title. Well, tonight, the Iowa City West baseball team will face Southeast Polk in the Class 4A title game. This is a rematch from last year. Southeast Polk won in a 2-0 shutout. The Trojans are clicking on all cylinders right now. They were 13-9 after the first half of the season, but since then, they are 21-2. and that's a big revenge game for us. You know, we really want to get that one back. And then everything that's happened with Flash, you know, it just really means a lot to us. Uh, I think it's going to be nervous excitement, a lot about, you know, like tonight. Just got a lot of butterflies, got to move, get them moving all in the same direction. Last year we had a lot of leaders, and I really love leading this team. Why, why do you love leading this team? They're really fun, and uh, th they bring a lot of energy, especially the younger guys. You know, having the, uh, playing here as their first time, uh, they're really excited for every moment, every chance they get, and it brings a lot of energy to the team. And don't forget, you can watch the Trojans take on Southeast Polk live on KCRG 9.2. The game is scheduled to start at 7.30. We'll have highlights tonight at 10. Well, there was a three-way tie for first place after round one of the Cedar Rapids Men's City Am. Let's head out to Jones Golf Course on the southeast side of town for round two. One of the leaders was Ryan Gass on the par 3-5. Very long birdie putt from the edge of the green. Gets it up the hill, and he almost drains it, but he'll take the easy par putt. Onto the six hole, par four, two-time champion Steve Kepke chipping downhill. Got to go over the cart path. Hits it perfectly. Nice bounce and roll to give him an easy par putt. Can't hit it any better than that. Eighth hole, Justin Panzagraf from five feet for par. And there's just enough speed on that one to drop in. The ninth hole was where many golfers found some life. Birdies were hard to find today. Sam Hogue putting for eagle. And that will disappear. Nice shot. Also on nine, defending champion Chris James. Birdie putt from at least 35 feet. This is a long one. A lot of speed. You got to be kidding me. Drano, he gives a fist pump and he should. No scores from the leader just yet. It took about three and a half hours for them to finish nine holes. They started around noon. They're probably still on the golf course. 
NASCAR Xfinity Series is back at Iowa Speedway tonight for the U.S. Cellular 250. Under the lights, Daniel Suarez in the 18 car is your pole winner. Cedar Rapids native Joey Gase will start in row 14. We'll have highlights of the race tonight at 10 as well. It's planned to start at 7 o'clock. I can't wait to see if uh, Wes can pull this out for another state title. They, they've been amazing on, the, mm -hmm. on this run here. All right, thanks, Josh. Back in with the final check of the forecast from Chris Havley. Keep it with KCRG TV9. Back to meteorologist Chris Havley for that final forecast. All right, we'll see mostly dry conditions for the, the remainder of the evening hours. As we get towards tomorrow morning, there's a small chance for some thunderstorms, especially areas north of Highway 20. And then for tomorrow afternoon, we're really going to warm up thanks to a lot of sunshine. Highs will be in the upper 80s to lower 90s. The humidity will certain be, certainly be in place. Definitely a pool day. But for Monday and Tuesday, highs back down to near 80, lower humidity. And for the rest of the week ahead, we're going to be seeing highs in the mid 70s. Not going to feel mm -hmm. like early August at all. So mm -hmm. pools will be uh, maybe a little vacant, I think. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Josh. And thank you so much for joining us tonight for the KCRG TV9 News at 6. I know it's beautiful outside with all that glorious sunshine. We appreciate you being here. Hope to see you at 10.